whatever. So, uh, so just be alerted to that, that when you're approving the recording, you're approving basically being on the, uh, the TV as well. Um, okay, are there any other agenda items other than the fact that we have to remember to add for our next meeting, uh, Tom brought up uh, talking about the Charles River modeling and any other stuff that, uh, that's going on. So we could have a little debrief on that. Thank you. Um, just remind me. Uh, and I don't know if any, but does anybody have any emergency topics for this agenda? Because otherwise I'm just gonna proceed. Okay. Um, one uh, thing, um, let's go on. So the first thing on the agenda is uh, um, discussion of website design and outreach and where we are on that, just a little update on that stuff which I'll turn over mm -hmm. to you, Dorothea. Absolutely, thanks, Michael. So in respect of our time, I'm keeping this brief. And Fred and Andy, if you wanna jump in, Tom, of course, as well, okay. let me know. So we have been meeting three times and we have advancing really well on uh, a really good, I wanna say intuitive um, decluttered website and navigation bar and our last meeting we have been uh, I ran this by Gino and David and they were um, giving very positive comments thanks Gino for um, your comments on logo and the seal which is roughed in at the moment so it needs to be look much better and we still grappling with the logo but that's not a big issue at all I think we can replace those two hands currently, two cupped hands with, a, with uh, some kinds of leaves on top are not perceived by all of us as the perfect logo. So we're gonna, you know, we will have more to look at at our next meeting in, the, uh, in January. Uh, so far we have concluded our topics, uh, basically our three boxes in the middle of the website where we talk about um, Sherbon specific sustainability um, topics uh, grouped into community, school, and sustainability at home. So these um, we have decided which topics are being grouped under those three umbrella terms. And I'm starting to write up content for these pages. Um, what else can I share? Uh, I have run this site by a couple of parents from Hillside, uh, from Pine Hill, excuse me, not Hillside is in Needham, Pine Hill, I meant to say. And they, uh, these are women in their 40s and um, late 30s, and they respond really positive to the design. And uh, yeah, so we are currently, we have decided on all of these design and topic issues. Now it's time to build content and I'm doing that. And once I have finished content to particular pages, you guys will have them to review. Uh, something that I would like to ask everybody in this committee um, is to help me build a list of emails of your friends in Sherborne and Dover that might be interested in being pinged about this website. So we are building a list of contacts that we will blast the, uh, for the launch of the website. And um, I would love to hear how I can build kind of like a log that's easy for you all to access and to, to populate with your contacts. I can do a shared uh, Excel sheet where people put in names, email addresses of people. Uh, would love to hear what you think is the best. Can best I uh, select those? Can I ask you a question uh, on, those, on, on those lines? Uh, it's not clear to me. Why, why do you want those email names? What do you plan to send them? Or what, what are you trying to achieve? I'm trying to achieve, uh, basically, when we're done with the website and we feel like this is the product that we want to la launch, we want to notify people in Sherbourne and Dover that the site exists so that they can sign up or like us on Facebook 
And this way we're immediately starting to create an audience for the website. Um, we will also have Instagram and Facebook linked to our website. So it's important that we, we hmm. immediately show up as a new site. So, so it's kind of, uh, if I can uh, put words in your mouth, it's kind of like a pre-announcement. Uh... It will be kind of like um, the email will read something like a uh, new website on sustain sustainable Sherborne being launched. And that would pop up in that particular person's email box and they will find a link where they can click on, which takes them to the site. And at the site they're being welcomed and then they can basically sign up for the, for the latest news, right? And this way, we're connecting people so that they, uh, on a regular basis, will receive news from that that I post through the website. So, one, for example, one last one last question, and others might have uh, questions on the same topic. Uh, you mentioned also our friends in Dover. No, nothing against our friends in Dover, but since this is a Sherborne website, well, why? Why reach out to them? Because there are two, from my perspective, Tom, uh, we working with the, um, with the regional school district in many ways, sustainability, uh, curriculum integration. We will also try to reach families to partake in things that we do in Sherborne. So for us, the bigger our audience is, it could also be reaching into Framingham and Natick the bigger we spread the news, uh, we have a bigger audience and that helps us in general with sustainability education, which the site is about. I personally would love to reach to many, as many people as I could. Uh, and the bigger the audience, the greater our reach, the greater the response and the more sustainability education and change of behavior we might have through this website. You know, um, if I may add, Dorothea, um, mm -hmm. Tom, I, I, you know, I, I was thinking the same thing when I saw when uh, Dorothea mentioned uh, uh, email addresses for Sherborne and Dover, and it reminded me of the conversation we had at the web, last website meeting where I raised the use of the term Dover Sherborne schools. Um, and I, I think that also hit a few of you as well. And we changed it to our schools, which I thought was a, a, a real good move. This I view differently though. This I think is publicity, um, mm -hmm. not so much ownership. Um, I'd be curious to know whether Dover has a website and whether they include Sherborne people in it. But um, putting that aside, um, I think the, the wider the audience, the better. I agree with you on that, Dorothea. It really only helps us. And I think we will, if we shine light on the fact that Sherborne is, uh, is spending uh, or is, is, has established genuine eye for raising sustainability awareness. It, sustainability is, as you said, publicity, it's more, it's, it's, we all need that. And the more we show that Sherborne can do it, uh, the more we will probably entice Sher uh, Dover, Dover Town to follow up with something similar or people, I mean, look at um, David Green, which is a great contributor to all of us. He's a Dover resident and he doesn't care where he lives he wants to spread the word about zero carbon uh, home energy efficiency no i don't i don't see a, a, a negative so uh, what i'm hearing is, is fine i just wouldn't want us to dilute our efforts and and yeah. uh, right yeah I don't if, think if, if you'll excuse the phrase go off the reservation and right <laughs> wor worry about other towns it's our town i want to worry about absolutely, absolutely. Um, is is the, the, Dorothy, is there an ability for people to unsubscribe from the website? Yes, yes. Okay. there will be an ability to uns unsubscribe from everything. 
Okay. This is the way how people will be pinged about the latest news. And if they want to be finding, let's say, every two weeks, something news about what's happening in Sherborne, they will. And they will have the ability to, de to unsubscribe. Is the email list that you're talking about separate from the idea of just using e-alerts to just let everybody know it's coming? As That's opposed separate. to having, because we want to have a, some focused... That's separate. That's separate. Uh, I'd say uh, for our initial launch, we should launch as wide as we can, so we have enough. We we attract people to the site. But why so, wouldn't we use the e alert, the whole town alert system? Because it will just go out to the town then, and not to all other people. That and a lot of a lot of very few people, I, I'm guessing, are on that, Michael, exactly. or know about it. Oh really? Oh, I thought it had. Oh, it's not everybody. Mm -mm. Okay, then I'm misunderstanding. You, you have to, as far as I understand, and I could be wrong, but I thought you had to self uh, uh, oh. join it. Yeah, you have to sign up for it. It's not. It's not like reverse nine one one where they it, they have okay. a database that they send. I don't. Do, do we know how many people are on that list? I'm. I'm on. I, you can do it by uh, by committee. So and far. I, and I'm not saying how many people in town. Them. I'm just wondering if there's a stat somewhere about how many people in town are on it. It probably is. I don't, I don't know. What, That's what a great is. question. I'm going to sign up right now. <laughs> I, no, no, I just want to know whether it's... Categories it's, you want to be alerted about. Right. Okay. I guess somebody should... We should look into what that is and see whether that... Yeah, probably ask Jeannie or... Uh, Okay. That's Somebody. right. Um, I'm taking a note of that, Tom. Jeannie would person probably be the person. Yeah, right. Find yeah. out how big it is, whether we already have a self-made list. And plus there's the, the, if you're dealing with Pine Hill and the, and the, the Parents Association, whether they would uh, allow you to use the Pine Hill email list. Um, yes. I mean, how many, how, many how many names are you looking for? Yeah. I'm trying to build, um, you know, I'm going by the 10 to 15%. So we have 4,500 inhabitants in Sherborne. I would love to launch this at least to 450 people. So I'm currently looking at 110 that I have personally connected to and collected emails off and I know will like to receive that letter or the news announcement. But I know that you have most likely in town a lot of friends that are sustainable. Oh, I, I probably have 50 names, but I'll bet we have a big overlap. Uh, but right. I'll, but I'll, send them, you, I'll send them yeah. to you. How would we, how would I start best start this like a shared um, Excel sheet? Whatever is easiest for you. Okay. All right, people can add to it. Yeah. Um, what's the schedule you think for all of this in terms of uh, the website? Do you have any rough sense of what, depending on what, I don't know how dependent that is on how much we you know, um, I don't want to, uh, for me, it's like, oh, yeah, okay, just I can't give you a, a, a date where we're going to launch oh, yeah. this. I think if we continue working on it as fast as we did now, I could see mid January, end of January as our launch date. That's like three weeks away. No, we are now, um, it's December 20. Five, five weeks. Five, yeah. That's, that's okay. doable, but uh, mm -hmm. some of us are going to have to keep working. <laughs> Correct. Uh, but and here's the other thing. Um, I really work then on, on Robin's availability. I've Right now, she had a lull for a while, but then we weren't available because the check wasn't coming through. Now she's doing these changes that we wanted her to do. And I think when I told her early January, she was like, mm, that's tight. But mid to end of January seemed to be doable. And I, I want to come out as soon as possible. We can add content once the site is launched. But we should, under each of these topics that we just mentioned, the schools, home, and so on, we should have content there, at least, you know, a little bit so that we can add on. There should not be quotation marks, a blank site where you click right. on something and it's nothing there. And Dorothea, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I, I thought, at least in my mind, and maybe mm -hmm. that was the only place it was, but in my mind, I think a big uh, a deadline or goal was to get it 
well underway before the uh, aggregation uh, project was really launched publicly. So uh, I forget, when is that project going to go live in terms of we have to start telling people about it? I think the um, the documents now are in pretty good shape for DPU uh, and, and um, well, for DPU. Uh, and those are the ones that have to be mounted uh, for for citizen review. Um, Greg would have a better idea of exactly how close we are, but I think we could we could put it out there very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, if I may say, guys, uh, please remind me if I'm wrong on this. Uh, you wanted also to have aggregation documents sit directly on the town page so that people don't need to click for sustainability to get there. So yeah, I, think, I think it's advantageous uh, to us to mount them in a couple of places simply right. where we can say and, to DPU, we, we put it out there pretty widely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree with Fred. The, the more ways Sherwin citizens have means to get to that information, the better for us. Okay. Because we want to have as many people, you know, if they click through, through particular sites, get to the information that we want them to absorb and to understand. So I would I would suggest we mounted we mount these DPU documents at the EC um, subpage or under the Energy Committee, and also under Sustainability in the Community. Definitely. Uh, yeah. So that people understand these two things, and of course, consistency all over. When we start to message about aggregation, we should be firm on particular terms and we should have duplicate documents wherever people go. Okay. It is, say, that goes without saying in my mind. So did I hear you say that? I agree. I think that yeah. we're all on the same page there. Did you say that David Williams has seen what the, the mock-ups? Exactly, are? David has okay. seen it. He reacted very positive. He had two comments. One was like, um, let me go back if to my emails real quick um, because I have been going through quite a bit of well, it's emails. Not a big, it's not a big deal if it's, unless it's something particular. I think two comments about making completely sure that people understand this is a town sponsored website. So he wants some wording on it that people on the homepage Right. So that people understand this is a department of the town and some other comment, but he was very positive and that Great. is a good thing for us. Yeah, no, I'm glad that he's getting to review it along the way, I think. Yes, he does. He, he, he gets to the things that are important. That's good. There's a lot of stuff for him to handle, but if I escalate stuff, he checks it. Great. Um, so on the outreach, just sort of, okay, the, so I guess it's still up in the air, this whole issue of how we deal with mass energize, I guess, is that still? So no. Really, uh, where here, are we with that? So he asked me to submit what I need for next year. And I was telling him I'm fine with the 19.5 hours that the current kind of like arrangement and it would be very, very positive if you could have the mass energize added to the website because it will help us with residents and and education and creating some urgency and some um, I'm searching for the right word. I mean, what mass energize does is it helps the home or homeowner understand here's a many of things you can do. So if you feel like you cannot replace your mechanical systems, you can at least compost or switch to LED lighting, or at least you can do these things. Right. So it helps us in general to motivate people along a certain roadmap. And well, we're all in agreement. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we will hear back from him. Uh, no, the question is whether that's something for, whether we're waiting for the next fiscal year or that's something that we can somehow find a way to to fund in this current fiscal year so that it becomes the idea of, let's say we launch February 1 even, and the fact that we have to wait to funding in uh, July, 
No. We'd like to get that. I would hope that it would be in this current fiscal year that we find a way to, uh, no. to integrate it. Absolutely. I'm working on that and I'm positive we can do it one or the other way. Yeah, okay. Hopefully we could do it the sooner way because yeah, they seem to be still, I mean, I think that's a real, I mean, yeah, I'm not done enough to be sold. I don't think any of us need to be sold on mass energize in terms of being a, uh, a, a, a useful part of the, the website. It is uh, a useful we need part. it in the next fiscal year budget anyway, because it's an annual annual thing. So, so it'd be great to get it in next year. We can still work on getting it started yeah, sooner. Right. That's a good point. Um, let's see. Anything else? Uh, anybody else wants to add on the uh, website and the and the outreach stuff? Um, the uh, okay. Um, it's almost half an hour. Gosh, time flies. I'm just realizing I wanted to keep this to 10 to 15 minutes. <laughs> I know. That's why I'm sort of was cutting <laughs> off. I was cutting off things. Uh, it brings up an issue of whether uh, that I brought up with Dorothy at one point and, uh, and just to think about even for you, Gino, is to what extent these meet. I mean, we tend to have the meetings it's every two weeks now, roughly. Uh, um, for an hour and a half is generally um, the length, and whether that's whether we're using Gino and Dorothea's time appropriately, whether we want to, whether they need to be here for the full hour and a half each time, or whether we uh, organize the meeting agenda so that they can do their parts, and to the extent that there's times when they don't have to be on, that we can save their hours, so to speak. You know, I think it would be helpful to get a sense from both Gino and Dorothea as to how busy they are, if you don't mind me asking, before we address this question. If you feel that your plate is really full with your energy committee work as coordinators, um, well, that'd be one thing. But if you feel like, well, you got the time to attend this, th that's another. It would be helpful to, to get a sense from both of you. So Andy, to your question, and I think Michael has, we had a conversation with Michael, I think last week about this. So ever since September, um, since we starting the website project and I'm basically school are back into session and I'm connecting with them on a regular basis uh, in, because of the, uh, the grant and the intergenerational climate conversation project, I am running up against my uh, full hours. And it would help me if, let's say, the one and a half hours that you know I'm locked in every two weeks, I could reduce to let's say 40 or 45 minutes. It helps me, and I once the website is up, and I will have a lot of emails to answer and people's requests. I don't know where this is going to, but right now I'm basically my last um, biweekly. Um, hourly uh, submission my was like uh, 38 uh, hours so close to what the max is and I expect once I have the website up it'll be more mm -hmm. so I will have to really nitpick what is effectively helping me or how I spend my time to create value for what I meant to do and it's a uh, good thing. I personally uh, think it's a good thing. No, I I, I, I like to hear uh, you're uh, engaged in so many different things. I, I, I would suggest that we, we could relieve you <laughs> of, of this whole hour and a half or, or... As I said, I always like to hear our yeah. EP members. I mean, I'm, I'm having, you know, Tom, Fred and um, Andy on now for the website. And then the next project, we will probably will do a subgroup again. So I see you guys on a regular basis. Right. Um, I, I don't I, know what Gino's idea is, but if we could reduce it to 45 mm -hmm. minutes, and I could, you know, give feedback on what I'm doing currently. We could try that for you. Be helpful. Yeah. Point made. I'll cut you off there and go to Gino. Yeah. Uh, we'll... Yeah, I think. Well, for me, it's it's fine right now. I mean, there might, I think it goes in waves, so it, it may be, there may be times when it's better to cut it back. But I also think it's helpful to 
for both of us to to know everything that's going on with sustainability. Um, maybe the other the other point might be I, I don't know if how your all's time is going if meeting every two weeks is still the the uh, preferred way or maybe reduce the the frequency as opposed to the the attendance but um for now um i think it's fine to, to hour and a half every two weeks yeah i mean we could do it twice monthly which cuts out some time there and we could see how that goes i mean the con the aggregation drove a lot of the stuff um to date uh to the extent that uh so that I, I mean, I agree. I see that there's value to everybody knowing everything, but uh, we can see how it evolves, and we can, we can make exactly. an assessment. For example, at the end of this meeting, yes, about when we make next meet and what's what's critical uh, to do in two weeks versus uh, something a little bit longer, um, uh, and. And we could play it by ear, and uh, we could try to yes. try to work it. We could try to work it for the like the agenda, uh, like in terms of some of the topics. Mm -hmm. An experiment. Mm -hmm. we, we could experiment with you, D Dorothea, that for the next time we meet, uh, since we've already meeting through most of the time now, that we basically organize the agenda around what what do we need to hear from you, and then you can opt out, uh, and we'll just do that. Andy, Andy one I see Andy. Yeah, I see Andy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, I mean, there, it depends on the agenda. Um, I can't imagine having this discussion about the website without Dorothea present okay. and, pre and presenting it out. Plus, as, as Gino said, um, it's important that at least both of you guys, Gino and Dorothea, be aware of what's going on generally in the committee. But on the other hand, I don't want the committee to be the tail wagging the dog, the, the meeting being the tail wagging the dog. You guys need to be freed up to, to do your substantive yeah. work first. So there are competing concerns. Yeah. And I'm saying once the website is up, uh, it will be up to me to really reduce, to, to move things forward the way I'm supposed to move things forward. I will, you know, my my primary concern is to bring to message what people have to do to bring down the personal footprint. And the website is my my forum where I can talk about things and real people and to educate them. At the same time, I need to run webinars. I need to run connect with people at school and do these projects in the community. And I will let you know how that works because for every time I'm basically I have a log where I've spent my time and it will be a new stage in the job once this whole thing right. is. Well, let's just play, I'm gonna cut you off so we go live because we're, yeah. uh, um, that we'll play it by ear. We'll do a little exercise at the next meeting maybe about how we order it um, in terms of your time, Dorothy in particular and see how it works. Yeah, um, we'll just uh, you can remind me of it when we start the agenda each time, if I forget about uh, how to organize it that way. Um, moving on, the uh, I'm going to jump around a little bit here because so community aggregation. We're waiting to hear back from MPC, right? And then uh, we could see how many comments they are, and then we have to the the, the, su the subgroup has to figure out um, how to coordinate our bringing out the public review of those plans and the overlap with whether we want to make it part of the website uh, stuff as well um, and whether it's worth a little making sure that we coordinate the two even if it delays a week or so um, or more but uh, I think it would be nice to do them together um, and we'll see what the issues are uh, from MPC. Um, the uh, Moving on, and the uh, grant stuff. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna come back to the work plan stuff in a minute. But I, in terms of any uh, updates on grants, anything new, Gino, to work on uh, or look at, or Dorothea, and stuff you've been working on. Just a quick, uh, just the briefest of updates on any of them the that you're working on. Briefest of updates from me is that um, the Gris Grinspoon. The Greenspoon right. Foundation grant $5,000 for curriculum integration and outreach to the community. 
is looking very positive, meaning that I was given a week extension for my deadline to submit the grant. And with the current slate of projects that I have submitted, um, they have reduced the amount of projects that are required for receiving the grant. So they came down from six to seven projects to five to four to five. Um, and I have currently four projects that people, I mean, when I say people, I mean dedicated teachers, parent volunteers that will help to do, will help with these projects to take place as a virtual fair. Um, basically, instead of a school fair, we will have a virtual version of this, like a big Zoom with different breakout rooms for parents, students will talk about the projects. And um, we will also have a project where people will learn about Mass Energize and what they can do with, with the entire menu. So the Grinswald, uh, excuse me, Green Spoon Foundation grant manager has given me hope that we will receive that money. In the town is people, the people in town, the schools are, despite Andy's being busy, the other folks are going. Well, to Andy Keo uh, has referred me to Mr. Smith and Mrs. Deaver Keegan on this, and I have reached out to them. So far, I have not gotten response from them. But the current plan B is that instead of the school being the so-called sponsor or administrator of the grant, it will be me who is dispersing the money um, through basically as a sustainability coordinator will be able to handle the grant. And that would be great. So you have, so you have that covered. So exactly. you have that administrative side covered as I well as out, the projects. Cut out the middleman. Yeah, for us, it's not great to do this without the whole right. wholeheartedly support of the upper administration. And the reason why I think people are hesitant at the moment is because they fear a backlash from parents saying, how could you possibly do an extra thing or at this really critical and crazy time our schools are going Dorothy, through. Could I, uh, Dorothea, could I ask you, who did uh, David uh, send you to? What what roles do they have? Um, you mean Andy Keel, right? Tom? Yeah, excuse me, Andy Keel. Andy Keel. We're, we're... So Andy Keel was saying, yes, from his side, he thinks it's a great thing, but he was being told that um, from the teachership, uh, he says, it, I, I heard a resounding no to any new initiatives this year. And I understand that. So I was coming back to him and saying, okay, I can handle the entire thing with no administrative um, time from any person at the school because we were, will run this virtual fair and I can do it with parent volunteers and dedicated teachers. The only thing I need is basically a check off and an acknowledgement that this is happening. And he referred me to Mr. Smith, the principal. And now I'm waiting to hear back from Mr. Smith if he wants to sponsor this. And if I don't He's hear at the high school, he's at the Dover Sherborne High School. He's at the high school. I, I, I hope he uh, responds to you. Yeah. Okay. Well, if he does not, then it will be a grant that's coming through the town of Sherborne. Sure. As long as, and, as long as the administration's fine, I'm going to still cut you off a little because I want to <laughs> get that. You, you still have to work out the logistics of it if you don't mind me summarizing exactly. it that but way. Your <laughs> suggest is it looks very positive hmm. and I'm happy Great. about that. Very good. Okay. Um, <laughs> Are there other grand things that you see in uh, on the horizon, Dorothea, before I switch to Gino? No. Okay. Gino, anything at the moment? I guess it's the, the status of the TA and the uh, GEO, whether that's been announced, we can work on it or what? Or Yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, there wasn't, you didn't see it on the news, the, any announcement on the TA, but it's fine. We're, we're free to talk about it as much as we want now. And uh, 
I contacted the consultant and I just got the contract back yesterday, late yesterday afternoon. I haven't even reviewed it yet, but so that's ready to be signed, hopefully, after I review it. Um, the street lights analysis is being done by Fred Davis. I heard back today from mm -hmm. the person doing that and that uh, we should have that by next week, she said. We were supposed to meet with uh, representatives from Guardian on Friday, but uh, the storm um, messed that up. So it's been rescheduled for the, the first week of January. Oh, really? Oh, they can't do it. Okay. So after the, it's already after New Year's. Let's get yes. moving. Two, okay. two questions from the note taker, if I may. Dorothea, how, uh, what's the actual foundation name for the $5,000 grant? Grinspoon, G-R-I-N-S and spoon like the spoon. Okay, good. That's what I thought. And that's and separate, is that considered part of cooler communities or is that? That is, that is the foundation that has come up with the cooler communities program. You might note that in the cooler communities is the cooler more communities well, is the more well-known entity on this. So the Friday, okay, now just going back to Guardian, I guess we're getting a little tight because I thought, yeah, it's, well, it depends how, how quick in terms of projects that we need to get developed. Okay, but I guess we don't have much choice. Right. Um, now, I did have one more question for, for Gino. You said TA consultant. Um, I want to spell that out and I don't know what TA Technical is. Technical assistant. Thank you. Could you send out actually Dorothea and Gino Dorothea, when you have your grant done, send it out to everybody uh, so people see what was actually submitted. And the same, yeah. even on the TA for the geothermal, for the geothermal, we should just send out the, the scope and send me the contract. I'd like to see whether there's anything in there. Send that to me, but you could send out the scope of that um, for uh, that. Um, so you have to guardian, what else are you gonna, uh, so there's no, in terms of grants, I'll ask Gino, in terms of specific, anything new as to grant opportunities other than working on the green communities we've got to push on and the streetlight stuff. Is there anything new in the pipeline that we should be thinking about or whatever? Or? Well, the only other thing is Dorothy and I met with uh, the people from MAPC about, there was the debriefing for uh, why we were rejected. And, and uh, Dorothea can jump in, but the, uh, the two things that uh, I think stood out the most were that the, this program focuses on resilience as opposed to mitigation. Not that mitigation is not part of it, but the, the emphasis is on the resilience part. And the other part is the environmental justice uh, mm. component that, um, Again, we, we're better off if we work with other communities. That makes sense on the justice side. The resilience, I've always had a little trouble with that. Yeah. Sort of. um, but I can understand, yeah. I can understand but, the But there is another round coming up, like mm -hmm. in February or March, that we could. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it the same scope? Is it the same? Uh, it's, she said it was going to change a little bit. Um, it hasn't come out yet, so we don't know for sure. But she she said she thought that yeah there be some changes right. So uh, thanks, Gino. Um, I'm looking at my notes from that call, and what came came around. Uh, I mean, the, the the takeaways from this call, as Gino says rightly, so is to it was uh, something about resiliency and the community that won uh, the grant is Canton, among one of the communities that won a grant is Canton. And they came out and they used a consultant to write up a grant for a workshop to train, it's called, uh, the title of the project that won was called Canton at Home. So it was something like a um, program like climate emergency response, right? And they will have the consultant do that workshop and they had the brochure already kind of like made and presented and submitted in the grant. 
So yeah, whatever the next um, grand description or grand will be, we should think about how we can band together with other communities on particular needs that have to do with resiliency. Like what would be the resiliency for, what's an example of what, I mean, uh, just so you know, I just want to think carefully about this to what extent it's even worth our time yeah. to pursue because I'm not sure what resiliency. Well, you have a vulnerable are. population, the elderly. Mm -hmm. We could certainly um, think about how we can address issues with, you know, uh, um, adverse heat effects, right? What do we do in prolonged? People lose power. People lose power. Um, drought, prolonged drought. How much? How much money did Canton get? Would you know? I don't know, Tom. Um, okay. I don't know if we will get to that information, but I can ask her to share that with us. The um, I think, Gino, did they already announce the winners? I think she said. They haven't written up the press release yet. Yeah, same, same once, similar situation. So once we have the press release, I think I can drill down and have have that document to be shared. And then for us, uh, it will be, again, the big questions, how we can band together <clears throat> communities to, to show that we will work regionalized. But the problem is that and we have to think about which grants or how we spend your time because the extent that we regionalize it, the grants weren't that large of our recall. And once we spread it out with what would be a larger community, well, just yeah. to be careful about what it is that's worth our time right. um, to do. On, on that point, Michael, um, I'm concerned that it doesn't really um, follow, I think our overall mission as the Energy and Sustainability Committee to be focused on resiliency i mean the perhaps in a very uh attenuated way the the impacts of uh climate change and uh, greenhouse gas as opposed to trying to lessen our our greenhouse gas footprint i i kind of thought that was our overall mission and i wonder if this is kind of a diversion from that i totally agree with that well, let's revisit. Well, I'm, I'm surprised, Tom, may I just interject? You're working yeah. on a grant that does have to do with exactly that, with um, resiliency. And it, it is. It, it, you're exactly <laughs> guilty as charged, of course. You're, you're I, I, exactly I'm right. Guys, because but but uh, hear me out. Yeah. But we didn't we didn't have to write that grant. Natick and Charles River wrote that. They did all the work. Yes. We're, we're just yes. supplying exactly. data. So exactly. at the time, but at the time, it was a discussion item whether there was a whether we would get anything out of it, even if they got the grant, and whether some of the stormwater or other kind of management stuff would be of some benefit. And there was some chance that it right. could benefit our plans in terms of some of our stormwater infrastructure and whatever else. So that it would help but right it was still a question at the time and it still could be a question of whether it's worth the time that uh that tom and gino are putting in but we think that there could be something for some future development but i think we just have to keep that lens on because right i have my issues around and i think we all share i don't think it's worth belaboring at the moment we just have to reconsider whether it's worth going after the mapc thing and whether uh and whether we do that as a group, as the energy committee, versus whether uh, Eugenio and Dorothy, I feel like that you know, how you how you choose what grants we go after, and whether that's basically a collective decision of all of us um, about what's what's worth doing with the, hate, with the limited I, resources. I hate to agree with the majority; it just drives me nuts. But but <laughs> I I actually think. Um, th there's also value in um, in reassurance that what we're trying to accomplish with aggregation and with, with a lot of different things, um, I think the, the the acceptance of the public gets is is uh, very much influenced by reassurance. So these regional regionalized things um, um, has added value in the reassurance aspect 
that will influence the acceptance rate in Sherburne and, and I think have ripple effects in other communities. I, I had a meeting today on a different subject with a person from Gloucester who was um, who's very engaged in all of this um, and, and uh, was telling me about their aggregation program and how well it's going. It started, I think he said in 2018 and it ends next year. Um, um, or, and that, that it's uh, very effective, but they, their decision was influenced by the kind of the, what others were doing. So I, to Dorothea's uh, point, I think there's, added, there's value in these things that are more, maybe they're more sustainability, but they're, they're um, I think it, it, it does have some benefit. I just don't want to discount the benefit it has in terms of influencing. I hope you didn't, I didn't, I didn't read that anybody was saying that, that the regional didn't yeah, have that. Right. Okay. So uh, fair, fair it's enough. just a matter of just being carefully measured about what it is we decide to spend a little time on and just come back to it. It'll be interesting to see all the Charles River stuff that's going on, whether that or we could reflect back on whether those kind of exercises are worth it. There I go agreeing with the majority again. Uh, so I mean, I'll be curious in hindsight to say, was it a good use of our time uh, to get out of this? Because I have problems with the fact that they've been modeling these things forever. And what have we concretely gotten out of it is, is a question, even though I love modeling as much as the next analyst. Um, but uh, okay, so in terms of then we'll see what the the new MAPC thing comes out like, and how far and and I guess we'd have to talk about as a group whether resilience and what it means in town, whether there's other ways to help the elderly deal with stuff, than what we would what would come out of this kind of whether there's other ways to if the, if the elderly as a vulnerable group or something that we need to do things that we could identify as a separate thing and see whether there's a what are the ways to get at it. Um, but that's, I'm going to, I'll shut myself. Well, there's also the it. aspect, like, remember in our MVP proposal, we had a component of evaluating our culverts throughout, throughout town. Um, I mean, I think that's a benefit to the town. Again, um, sure, the priority should be mitigation and reducing carbon emissions, but we can't ignore that regardless of what we do, we're very likely to have increased storm events and we need to prepare for them as well. So if we have an opportunity for a grant that will advance that, I think we should go for it. Oh yeah, as long as it's stuff we really need basically and that, that's the way to do it. That's all I care is coming back to making sure it's stuff that has practical value. Um, Objectivity, oh. Uh, there we go. Uh oh, we have to go into a philosophical discussion. Uh, on that note, uh, so we're through with the grant. Going back to uh, what we got here. It's been an hour. Um, it's been an hour. Yes. Um, trying to be sensitive to that stuff there, too. Uh, and so we deal with the grant and we're turning back to tracking stuff there. I guess one other, I'm looking down the agenda here website. I guess we've been covering some of the work plan stuff that we've been doing, aggregation, grant we've dealt with. I guess there's FY22 budget and staffing issues. I guess I haven't, I sent an email to uh, to David as of last time even, and I have not received a reply or whether there's any consultation needed with us other than I guess, I guess, I don't know whether the confirmation of hours for you, Dorothea, was since the last meeting because you told at the last meeting that David talked about that he has funding. Was there anything new since in the last 13 There's days? There's anything new from you the, or Gino in, on this? From my side, I said this is the arrangement is fine. But is this something new from the since the last meeting? No. Oh, okay. well, that was before the last meeting. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I'm yeah. trying to see whether there's. He's still, he's still hanging out the meeting that he's planning to set up, which I, I haven't seen that set up so far. Yeah, no, that's all I'm good for. I'm basically yeah. just bringing up that I haven't, I haven't heard anything since the last meeting, and I'm just checking with that with you and Dorothea whether you've had any new discussion about budget, but I'm gathering not. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, maybe he has what he needs, but. Uh, um, but I haven't heard anything. I'll leave it at that then. Um, the, uh, 
going down on, let's see, the okay. in terms of work plan stuff that we're all working on here, uh, we'll deal with the Charles River another time on the agenda. We've heard about the green communities thing here. Um, the, uh, and we heard about the geo and the street lights. Hopefully we'll get back soon, something to see what that is. Coolidge Crossing. Um, I don't think it's, uh, I can't tell if it's new since the last meeting or not, probably not that uh, I guess the developer is doing, I can't tell if the last meeting I said about that, the developer has hired this green engineer, another firm to look at possible energy fish. Did I say that last time? I think so. Uh, what? I think so. Okay, then there's nothing new other than I have to go pride them to see if there's a, an outcome of their study. Uh, the planning board, I guess, is uh, moving ahead, but- uh, Is it the ZBA? The ZBA, I mean, excuse me. Yeah, well, I, I forget, when's their next hearing? You remember? The, the January, January 29th or something like that. 28th, yeah. 28th. Thank, thank you. Um, so I will have to prod them to see whether they've gotten any results on doing more energy efficient design issue uh, elements. They the seemed at the ZBA hearing, they seemed fairly positive towards solar panels on the roofs. Um, whether they I, yeah. doing that. Or, yeah, but I actually mind. consider that secondary. I feel yeah. like that's that's independent of being more efficient. Because uh, absolutely, be, absolutely, but it's yeah. a positive thing. Yeah, no, I, uh, that one, I think, is they can outsource it to a developer and do it as a sort of separate little project. That's sort of standalone issue. But I think the thing that really makes the, uh, the mitigation impact is whether they can make the, the, uh, the whole project a much more efficient, tighter uh, design. Um, and, but, and whether they'll really electrify more so that, uh, so that there's opportunities to make it more renewable in the future than if you, it's all done with gas. And a lot of stuff is done with gas, for example. Um, but I'll have to press on that there. Um, going on with, uh, I guess, the solar assessment. Um, and, and I guess whether, I can't tell whether we, did we agree last time? I'm a little scratchy on my notes, I say, uh, whether I didn't get a chance to look, whether we're decided how to go ahead with SOLEC to look at all the buildings and not just Pine Hill. Um, and uh, yes, you know, yes, where we are in that. Yes, one, one little hang up in that is the fact that Solect has sold their project on the DPW garage and the town, there's some paperwork the town has to sign, which I don't believe it's signed yet. Um, so, so there's kind of like a little awkwardness now until we, until we do what they need to complete their transaction. Um, I feel awkward asking them to look at other buildings, but I'm sure they will once we get to that point. Okay. Um, and I guess I would, uh, I guess at some point I'd like to talk with you about the sort of, the sort of integrated whole issue of uh, where we are on the whole Pine Hills new oh. roof, talking with the school committee, getting the new roof and new, any insulation related stuff and the whole geothermal and how that, and the solar project, how that, well, that's a whole bundle that needs to look at, at, a, at a comprehensive, look at it all together, even if they don't have to necessarily be interdependent, but just look at that as a bundle and yeah. decide how to go approach the, the business approach Dawn and whatever else, because I'm, I'm interested in spending some time on that and, and trying to do the planning ahead of time for how we might finance and structure the solar project on the, uh, on the schools as I brought up before. But that's something I'd like to free up time so that we can talk and just do that separately and then we can report back. But, because I think that's gonna be the next, one of the next really big projects. Since it could be as much as four or 500 kilowatts, that's many million, that's, that's a significant bundle of money. Um, you know, can I, can I ask you a quick question on that DPW garage? What's the name of the company, Soltech? Select. Select, like select but with an O instead of an E. S-O-L-E-C-T. S-O-L, okay, e -C -T. thank you. And how big is the 
DPW system. About 100 kW? Yeah, 100. Mm -hmm. Nice. And I guess we have, to, I mean, when we do the whole look at, we will remember the community center. Yes. <laughs> yes, in fact, do. Tom, um, it's possible, it, it's not, again, the, the, um, the RFP has not come out yet for that, for the Green Communities Grant, but it's possible we can include the community center because we achieved our 25, 20 percent reduction at one point, though we're not we're not 20 percent below anymore. So our regional representative said that um, we may be able to include it, even though it's not in our baseline. Um, so I'm wondering when we meet with Guardian. You're on the board, right? Yeah, I'm on the uh, foundation board. Yeah, foundation board. If we can, I can try to get the Guardian people to take a look at the building while they're here. If we can get access. When, when, uh, it's, uh, how soon are you talking? Fifth. First week of well, January. Yeah. Let, let's talk tomorrow or something yeah, else. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, moving on. Actually, we may be getting through here. Maybe we'll be a shorter meeting. Um, one issue I, I skipped and then we come back to is uh, on the outreach, to what extent do we, the whole greenhouse gas inventory as a, uh, as a outreach issue, whether we're saving that for the, whether we wanna ball that up with the, with the website launch or whether there's some reason to consider a separate little launch of that or whether we want to get more fit whether as an issue we want to get a little more face time with in front of the select board whether as part of outreach and education how much we want to coordinate that with the website versus do we even want to have a separate presentation before the select board on the uh on the greenhouse gas inventory um I don't know. I'm just putting that on the table as to how much to coordinate that versus do it in any kind of staged manner. Um, well, my druthers are to start talking about greenhouse gas um, first and then follow it as, with the um, website, with, with the uh, main website launch, or I, I don't know about the website, but, but it just seems like the greenhouse gas maybe is the is the long range, long term goal, you know that's decades and um, everything else follows after that. Other people have comments about the idea of whether to. I mean, obviously, you take an effort to do a little to uh, create a presentation for the uh, select board, um, but people have views about the order of things or how integrated or. Uh, my first thought would be, you know, uh, those those uh, that board is pretty busy, so you want to make uh, most use of there in our time. Maybe ask for fifteen minutes and cover everything. We're about to bring out the aggregation. We just brought out a website, and let us educate you on Sherborne's greenhouse gas uh, contributions. Uh, to Tom's point, I, I always feel like, especially with boards, like a select board and advisory, get them involved early so that something doesn't come at them as a surprise, but comes at them as, oh, I already knew about that. That's great. You know, um, I hate to surprise key players. Well, does that mean, I'll interject before you can answer, you can speak, but I hear, I mean, at times if I felt like I, we had the bandwidth and let's say, or I had the time myself, to help out that say sometime later in January, I guess I feel like the board has a lot going on, but I think getting on the board's agenda, I, I'm thinking about the whole idea of whether having more regular kind of snippets of time in front of them um, and, not, and not have to cover everything at once because it'll get too diluted. But even if there is a 15, 20 minute window just on the greenhouse gas inventory, which and what it means as well as just a little could be two minutes on the fact that there's aggregation, there's a website, 
coming up and whatever the uh, the broader update, but have a focused topic for whatever 10 or 15 minutes and a two or three minute overview of other stuff going on. And I would say maybe see if we could think about doing something towards the end of January because I have a feeling the website would see if the website's really not till the beginning of February, for example. Um, and I'm not sure when we, and, and we'll still have a, a bunch of things because we're gonna have the website, we're gonna have the, the aggregation plan uh, public hearing that hopefully, uh, and maybe that gets combined with the greenhouse gas, but because uh, we got to move on both of them. Uh, but whatever. What were you going to say something, Andy? Since you have no, no, I, 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 I agree with what you were saying. Mm -hmm. um, Andy, I'm waiting for you to say but. No <laughs> but, man. Not this time. <laughs> uh, then, then let me. I, I, I think I think saying sooner than later have a, a, a five minute spot with a 10 minute spot with a select board about apple pie is a good thing and they'll welcome it as a, as a, a, a moment of good news kind of thing um, about greenhouse gas emission, long-term goals, decades. Then follow that with news about aggregation and a, you know, a month later and then a month later have, have the solar or the website or you know, I think having uh, a sequence of of uh, positive things that uh, show some some momentum, I think is really a good thing. And then John, I think you're agreeing with what Michael was saying. And really it's just a matter of when do we schedule the first one? Right, I hate that one, I agree. And plus then it's, it's, <laughs> well, it's, it's not necessarily apple pie and <laughs> wonderfulness when you're basically saying, uh, let's say here's our emission levels. The oh. goal is let's say 2050 is net zero, people are trying to get half the emissions by 2030. That means, uh, as England said, okay, you're all gonna have electric cars in the next 10 or 15 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you're all gonna re redo your heating systems in the next uh, 20 years. Wait, I'm writing this down for the Sherburn goals. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that's what those, I mean, all those, all those climate action plans that we were that the MVP funding might have produced and has produced for many towns, I mean, they come up with these scenarios that we sort of know what they are. I mean, it's 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 it is sobering to think of what it means that okay, if we're really going to replace all our electric cars in the next uh, ten or twenty years, that means you got to do some of them this year, um, or as people go to make their new shopping decisions, uh, you have to find the people who are willing to be the the first adopters, the fact that the cost will be a little bit higher um, now versus what it's going to be in 10 years versus wait for the cost to come down is the fact that it's a chicken and egg. You got to push people to, you got to push it all to happen. That's what the regulatory structures are versus carbon taxing or, or other kind of cap and trade. They think they use the market, but it's really you drive the market by these kind of regulatory things, I think, where right. you got to do it. And then that really pushes the market and the prices go down. Um, like can, I, can I ask a question? Uh, does the state maintain somewhere, I hope, on one of their many uh, 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 sustainability energy focused uh, websites, a compilation of cities, you know, what cities have achieved uh, what uh, reductions in greenhouse gases or any of those kind of statistics. It'd be not nice to compare Sherborne to other cities, excuse me, other towns. Communities. Our progress. I don't, I haven't seen it. I'm not sure whether, I'll, I'll, I'll look. whether there's some, you think that there's going to be some motivation because some other towns are doing it faster than we are, I guess. Is I, the, is the, I, I think it would be helps, educational. But, yeah. No, I mean, it is. It gets tricky. It's educational in the sense that if we had plans, if we took the climate action plan from Concord, from Acton or whatever else and say, they all include that we're doing this kind of, residents are, ch are changing their behaviors in terms of how they drive and how they heat by these kind of targets over the next 10 or 20 years. Um, it'd be interesting to maybe compile those kind of goals that exist from nearby towns that are comparable so that we could say this is reasonable for us to sort of let's all do it together, um, because not it, a lot of towns have done it yet. It, 
it'd be interesting to, to learn if the progressive towns like Concord or Lincoln have seen some measurable reductions. Oh yeah, that yeah. would be great too. But um, I'm feeling a lot of them just started in the last few years, but right. Yeah. But right, I agree. It would be good if you found something like that. I mean, it's a matter of comparing performance and goals across town so that right. we can show that this is what, these are, these are reasonable things and other towns are doing it. Um, and uh, we're all in it together. And I'm, I'm impressed with, with the state. I think everybody saw that announcement yesterday that the state has joined this small group of uh, states, uh, some uh, Eastern Seaboard Energy uh, Compact. Everybody see that? DCI, it's been in the works for a while. And it, in a way it's a little disappointing because it's only three states and DC. Very, but very I think New York and New Jersey will probably come along at some point. Yeah, they're, hope, they're, they're hoping to get others to join. Are they, uh, how, do you know how, three states you're mentioning? Yeah, I think it's Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. CT and the District of Columbia. Oh, no, Vermont. Vermont is one of them. And D.C. Yeah. And D.C. But, well, it, but something the talks have been going called? on for a couple of years. What is it called? What's that? What's it called? TCI, Transportation oh. Carbon Initiative, I think. That's right. It was it's, the, the it's focus. It's just like Reggie, but for transportation. Mm-hmm. Oh, that one hasn't been, that has been signed, was signed? Because I just yeah. got an email from MAPC saying to urge a legislator. Today, I got it. There was some, some big press release yesterday. Oh, then I'm wondering what Yeah, I think the legislature may, may have to still approve it, but the governor signed on and- uh, um, Okay, maybe that's why I saw the announcement that, so the governor's agreed, now we got to get the legislator behind it to uh, push. Yeah, but they're expected to 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 do it. There, okay. there, there's not big opposition or anything. Michael, maybe uh, we can have on the next meeting the agenda a uh, short discussion on a select board presentation. Right. Okay, we can start thinking about it. Um, okay, we have the Charles River next time too. Um, so besides. Uh, any, any, before I move on to like the next time agenda and a time, um, I missed something in this sort of uh, going over where things are. Is there any other topics that I might have missed in terms of uh, for today's meeting? Okay, I'll take that as no. And so in terms of beyond this, the normal sort of checking on various things for next time uh, that we've been doing to update things. I have the uh, select board presentation and I have the Charles River stuff. That's something new there. Anything else for the agenda for next time before we get to a meeting time? Everybody out, get out your calendars. Um, so let's see, in 2021, uh, oh, in New Year 2021. Wait, I'm not done. <laughs> well, I'm done with 2020. <laughs> I don't know. I have to do my regret analysis for the year. <laughs> uh, so uh, yes, tomorrow, Festivus is the airing of grievances. Yeah. Right. That's <laughs> and yes, oh, at least yesterday was winter. Happy winter, winter solstice to everybody. Yeah. Yes, Today was two minutes longer than yesterday. There you go. Right. Upward trajectory. Mm. Day's getting longer now. Exactly. And yesterday, for the first time, I finally got a look at the Jupiter Saturn. Uh, oh, moon. you did? Yes. It was, oh, good. It was clear enough to see it here. Did they um, both inside the same ring? What's that? Nothing. Oh, you, I, it was a joke that I missed. It yeah. doesn't it doesn't float well. <laughs> no, it didn't. <laughs> So I was being told by a friend of mine, we are entering the age of Aquarius, which means like massive social change. Again, didn't we do that? Yeah, well I think we did that when we were kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Dorothy, you're not old enough. You wouldn't. Yeah, yeah right. 
Thanks for compliments, Sean. Yeah, right. I know. I'm waiting for that one to come back. Yeah, that was the 60s. This I, is the dawning there, of the age of Aquarius. Oh, this is now the dawn. Is, now, now, now dawning is the dawn. of. Now's the day. Oh, right. <laughs> um, okay. Well, we certainly are witnessing uh, some uh, social appeasal of Hugel's. <laughs> Uh, I hope it comes out in a reasonable way here. Um, exactly. Oh my. Oh my. So, uh, are we meeting in two weeks or three weeks? Let's see. That's as we were discussing before. January 5th would be. I'm actually mm -hmm. promoting, I want to uh, um, suggest a, a three week break. The reason being is that I have both of my kids from abroad here for just two weeks. Oh no, that's great. Nice. And then they Very will nice. be gone for half a year. So understandably, I'm going to delve into every minute of shared time. Good. So do we have any urgent things that we need to do? I mean, other than the select board thing, well, hopefully the, uh, the only thing that's any of the aggregation stuff we can go along in the subgroup and the same with the website stuff can go on. The select board stuff, we'll just figure that out at one point anyway. We just got to get on the map. What do people think about going for the 12th? Uh, if we do the 13th, well, this time on the on the 12th would be fine. Uh, if you wanted to do it later, the 13th is better for, Wednesdays are better for me, but I I'm, I can do it exactly 3.30 on the- I'm Trying to deal with your colleagues, some other colleagues' preferences for the- Yeah, I, I am, I'm unavailable on Wednesdays, unfortunately. All right, well, let's do this time, are we doing Tuesday the 12th. On, are I'm, we doing 3.30 on the 12th of January? I'm not available on the 12th. Okay, so we have this uh, trade-off of person versus person. Sorry. That's okay. No, it's it's gonna happen. Uh, Fourteen. I don't know. You and Fred have to go uh, do paper, scissor, and hammer. Right. Or, I mean, I I could do the fourteenth on Thursday, but I'd have to be off like four forty-five. Uh, do, do you want to consider shifting to the fourteenth, the Thursday for that week? That's fine by me. Fred, that works for me. Okay. John, Gino, the fourteenth. Good. I just checked my calendar. It's wide open. 3.30. Okay, 15. so we're going to do 3.30 on the 14th. Yeah. And I'll just excuse myself by 4.45. Okay. And Gino, you'll send me a Zoom. Yeah. And, uh, and I'll have to let Greg. Okay, I'll email Greg as soon as I get through with this. Uh, and hopefully that works for him, but I guess that's the way it goes. Okay, good. We're done. Well, well Mike, excellent. Nice job running this meeting. And yeah, you. really good. Okay, so I should just keep cutting off people, <laughs> including myself. <laughs> okay. As long as nobody takes it personally, just know that <laughs> my, my little attempts to, to cut you off are just my trying. I have my paper towels right next to me, so don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't that nice. <laughs> the uh okay i uh move to adjourn as uh, yes. second. second okay andy i well actually if we have discussion first discussion, no discussion. happy no discussion. happy holidays and a happy new year to all of you and the same to all of you yes yeah. you okay andy uh, okay tom i john i fred I don't know if you're muted, Fred, but I saw oh. your mouth move. Okay. <laughs> mouth did move. I've been having some trouble with my Wi-Fi. I actually got kicked off for a minute at one point. Okay. That was but an yeah. eye from you and an eye from okay. Michael. Okay. Five zero adjourned at 450. Okay, everybody. Have a good holiday, everybody. Happy New Year. Okay. Exactly. Same to you Happy guys. New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.